Hello, this is Alex Osels in the Boston University Biomedical Engineering Teaching Lab. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use an oscilloscope. If you get in front of the instrument and you want to make some measurements, you know, what are some of the first things you do and things that you could do to try to avoid getting into problems. So I turn my scope on, and I'm looking at it, I can see a trace, everything's good. So the thing that I often do, because you just don't really know what someone was using the scope for beforehand, is hit the default setup button. It's up here. If I hit that button, it brings the scope back to the factory defaults. And when you do that, like that kind of ensures that no odd settings were made. Like you just don't know who was using it before for what. Maybe they have like a weird trigger set up. You know, maybe it's on nanoseconds or AC coupled. So if you bring it back to the default, it's very deterministic. Now, of course, then you have to know what the default settings are. So now that I have that set up, now I connect my signals. So say I'm gonna connect from a function generator and then go into my channel one of my scope right there. And look at that, I have a waveform. So it turns out that the oscilloscope default is kind of set up so that if you have a one kilohertz sine wave, you know, in the voltage, you know, in the, you know, maybe millivolt range, it'll display it on the scope. You know, there's no DC offset on there. It's set to 500 microseconds per division, one volt per division. So it works kind of right out of the box. Now, there are a few things that are wrong here. So, 200 millivolts peak to peak, it looks like we're really two volts peak to peak right here. So now we've got to set up some of the uh, inputs on the vertical amplifier on the scope. To do that, you push the number one button to change the channel one vertical settings. So just note, if I push this button twice, it turns off the trace. So you, if the trace is gone, you know, there's no indication down here that no, uh, you know, volts per division, push the number one button, trace will either appear or not appear, but more importantly, it says right here, the number one is on, you know, number one channel is on, it's on one volt per division. So now I can adjust some of my settings. So I'm DC coupled because I'm gonna be looking at signals with DC component. Bandwidth, bandwidth limit is off, volts per division is coarse, that's, that's good. So probe is 10X. So a 10X probe is an oscilloscope probe that is a specially designed probe to use with the scope. So we don't use that in this lab. These BNC cables right here are 1x, so you always want to set that to be a voltage probe that has an attenuation of 1x right there. And now you'll notice that the volts per division changed. So I could do a reality check, right? I'm on high Z load, 200 millivolts peak to peak. I go over here and check and make sure that I'm getting 200 millivolts peak to peak. I am, I got two, two divisions times 100 millivolts equals 200 millivolts peak to peak. And now we could check the vertical, or the horizontal, I mean. So we have a one kilohertz sine wave. And then we go over here, and the little M in the middle tells us what our, vertic our horizontal divisions are. And they're 500 microseconds. So we could see the period of the sine wave is really two vertical divisions, two horizontal divisions. And I could move the horizontal position knob back and forth in order to move the waveform back and forth and you can see right there you know our peaks are showing up two divisions so things are aligning one kilohertz is really a one millisecond period waveform so one millisecond one millisecond over here and I could compute that because 500 microseconds times two divisions is one millisecond 